It is with great pleasure I come to you today from the great American city of Miami where I'm finishing a four week natural here. Nine out of nine students fully sold out and I'm on my way to Melbourne uh, in just a couple of weeks where I'm doing another two programs down there. And for all you guys in Europe and the United States, Australia is open. So you can actually finally come down to Australia where the exchange rate's really good. And you can have a whole lot of fun in the, the sunny country down under where, where I grew up and where I learned game. But what I'm gonna to talk to you about today is all about flirting, okay? So I'm super excited because on the 27th of March, we are launching Conversational Casanova, okay? And I'm finally introducing to the world the conversational compass and the range of emotions. And in this blog, I wanna to talk to you about the way that I use that tool to teach students how to flirt and then the kind of drills that you can get into and how that relates to the mistakes that students are making when they're with me in the field. So, what I see happening all the time, I'm, I'm training guys with how to learn game, and how to be good at, at picking up girls, and we're doing day game out here today, and so a lot of the times the guys will go up to the girls and they'll, they'll talk to the girl and they'll start the conversation and they will say something kind of funny or interesting from a range of emotions, like for example, you know, oh, you've got a broken leg. Did you kick your, your husband and break your, your foot? And that is actually a pretty funny expression. On the conversational compass, that's like a positive silly. But what happens, a big problem that happens is that a student will say one edgy thing that they've identified as valuable on the conversational compass, and then they'll kind of drop the conversation there. What I wanna teach you today is that when you start using the conversational compass, the whole idea is that you don't just say one edgy thing, then you start bouncing around to positive, serious, negative, silly, things about her, things about you, and you really wanna have like maybe five themes of conversation one after the other, okay? When you start a conversation with a girl, like a classic concept that we spoke about maybe as, as long as 10 years ago, is that when you start a conversation with a new person, imagine that you need to speak to that person for 10 hours in a row. And if you're gonna meet that girl and date that girl, that is gonna be a 10 hour conversation because you've got your pickup today, your conversation on the next date, and then you're gonna form a relationship and you're gonna have this really long conversation. What tends to happen is that so many of you guys think in terms of acceptance or rejection. So you'll go up and you'll say something that's kind of funny that you've learned from somebody like me or something online, You'll say something funny and the girls will laugh, but then that will be the end of the conversation, right? You'll almost kind of say the funny thing and make all these classic body language mistakes like hold your breath, your eyes will dilate, uh, you'll get a high center of gravity, you'll be listening on every word, and that just throws things completely off in the way that you talk to the girl. So the way that we discuss, the way that we discuss it when we're, we're coaching in person is we call it barreling through barreling through. So you'll go in and you'll say something ridiculous. And one of the students is here. What are some of the ridiculous things that I've been having you guys say, Andre? Uh, so for example, I'll say to the student, okay, we're going to use a range of emotions. Something that's not safe is to say, hey guys, uh, I just got out of jail. Or hey guys, I'm going to go to jail next week. And that is something that's edgy. It's going to make you laugh. It's going to make the girl laugh. It's going to be kind of an awkward giggle. And then every, you're charged up to have a fun and funny conversation. You've set a precedent of silliness, or at least edginess, especially if you're a well-dressed guy claiming that you're about to go to prison, but then you need to what's called barrel through. So you need to have four or five different topics of conversation to start running that conversation, to start making the pickup work. The way that you guys tend to think is in terms of acceptance and rejection, and this constant, very difficult self-analysis and self-assessment while you're in the conversation. You make the mistake of wondering, how am I doing? Is this going well? Does she like me? How well am I performing my game ability? And obviously that's not gonna work for you. So if you go up and say something like, hey guys, nice to meet you, I'm really excited, we're having my coming home from prison party, so good to see all of you, what's going on? Now don't just say, I'm coming home from prison, and then wait, like, do you like me? Was this an interesting line? Is this funny? <laughs> then you wanna say, oh, you know, prison was really great, you go into some like silly negatives, Prison was really good, you know, you know, I had some really great intimate experiences there. I went to the gym every day, I got some tattoos on my ass, and I, I had a male girlfriend for the first time in my life. I had a really great experience in prison. I feel like I'm a better man because of it. So you give this whole spiel, and while you're giving this spiel, the girls are gonna go through their own range of emotions. They're gonna think it's a little bit 
funny, then a little bit awkward, but then as you go through the second, third, fourth, fifth sentence in your approach, they're gonna realize, oh, hold on, this is just a, a talkative, funny, expressive kind of guy. We like that kind of guy, and he's not even hoping that we have to stop and laugh at the jokes. So you can host the conversation, and the good thing is when the girls realize that you're that kind of guy, they wanna contribute, they wanna challenge you, they wanna have fun, and you know, girls can't really like wrestle or fight or get into MMA, at least not casually and socially. They like the battle of the wits. They like to, if they, if they think that you're a confident guy, they wanna see if you really are as confident as they hope that you, as they hope that you are, and then they're gonna start to test you. So then they might start saying things like, you're full of shit, this is bullshit, but you gotta realize this is actually them getting exciting, excited and wanting to flirt with you. So if you say something, unusual, something edgy. And it can also be positive, serious, edgy. Something like, oh my God, you guys are extremely well dressed. You're super attractive. I think you nailed your outfits tonight. And when you say something like that, you risk rejection. So that's positive, serious, edgy, right? This is all on the conversational compass. But it's different than positive, silly, I'm going to jail, but it still hits an emotion. And that gets the conversation going. And then if you were to go in the more serious direction, then you would want to go in the opposite, use the range of emotions and use something self-deprecating. And you would say things like, oh my God, you guys make me so nervous. Then you could be almost negative serious and say, I accuse you of using your seduction powers against me. I'm just innocent. I'm just an innocent bystander in all of this. So you've used four topics from four different quadrants on the range of emotions on the conversational compass and the girls are not gonna be evaluating you based on just one line. They're gonna accept you and realize this is an intelligent guy with a range of emotions who can think for himself, who's not waiting for our acceptance or rejection. And the girls categorize you as the type of guy who they want validation from. And remember, in the same way that if you get excited about finally speaking to a super hot girl who's into you, they get excited because only one out of 100 guys actually has this kind of personality range, this, this personality strength, and that girl wants to be valued, admired, and complimented by somebody they respect, because it's really good for their sense of self. And that's it, if you're a great guy, the girl wants to be validated by a great guy, and you can actually easily demonstrate this with your, your behavior and your range of emotions, and the girls are gonna feed off that, right? So I'm tying in a whole lot of concepts here together but I'm basically saying barrel through when it comes to flirting. You need to have many ranges of emotions lined up together. So normally in, in my patterns of pickups, I get through some of my funny stuff early on. I think some of the funny stuff that I was saying, uh, saying recently, based on what America, so many American girls listen to podcasts about serial killers. So I walk up to the girls and I say, hey guys, I'm, I'm a serial killer. I'm very sexually attractive. And the girl's like, what the fuck? It's so absurd. It's reflected on myself, it's a self-deprecating, negative, silly, right? So it's a me, negative, silly. So I'm not offending them. They can reject me or confront me if they want to. And I say, well, one of the things about being, being a serial killer is I need to be very charming. I need to help to make people understand me. And I don't know why, but it really appeals to so many women because so many girls love these podcasts. I don't know what it is about guys like us, but they just, we just seem to be very popular. And as you go on with those five lines of conversation, the girls can hear your type of accent, hear your behavior, see that you're not looking for acceptance, that you can handle yourself, and then it's all good. And then you change gears from the silly column into the serious column, and you say, no, uh, on, a, in, on a serious note, I have a creative media company, I'm working here, I've got, a, I've got an, uh, an agency here in Miami, um, working with my staff here. We're going out for Andre's welcome home party, welcome home from prison party. Uh, and you know, you guys are probably busy right now and that's a serious negative, that's empathy. You say, but I'd love to buy you a drink a little bit later. That's a serious positive. Unless, unless you guys decide that you hate me, right? So you're hitting all these emotions, you're making things so interesting, but you're not waiting for permission to keep the conversation going. And when you put it in your head that you're the host of the conversation and it can be kind of colorful, it really flows. You get into that flow state that I talk about. And to tie in yet another, a 10th idea in this little video blog here, if you kind of let yourself speak first, hear what comes out of your mouth and then recorrect and calibrate as your conversation goes on, the girls are just gonna love it. It's so easy to do, but 
when I see the contrast between myself, the, the coach, and the students who are less experienced, they stop and they worry like, what should I have said? Is this going okay? Look, the big picture here is you have a win-win attitude. You, you want them to have a good time. You have no negative intentions. You're well-trained. You're willing to push through to bridge the gap between two strangers who don't know each other. All, all these things are lining up. And then once you kind of win the girls over, you say things like, hey, don't let me stop you. Um, uh, it's girls night. You guys got to do what you got to do. Another really good verbal technique is to say, with you girls, I feel like I don't need to entertain you. I feel like there's no pressure with you girls. And then you can have this really chill conversation and chill interaction where you don't need to keep them actively engaged all of the time. So here are some of the flirting techniques. Now imagine this, on Conversational Casanova, this new program, it's coming out next week, I finally built in an online classroom, okay? So you have all of the, the modules, so you can hear that one of the modules is 1,000 pickup lines. Because what's really hard to find is things that are not safe, which is boring, not over the top, which is aggressive, but just edgy. Things like BDSM, chastity belts, cancel culture, free the nipple. These, all this array of edgy topics in society, if you can have a library of these edgy things that are just funny enough to make the conversation interesting, but not get you in trouble, then your game is gonna be brilliant. It's like ammunition, unlimited ammunition that you can use to your heart's content. But in the online classroom, we do this brilliant thing. And again, thanks to Ricky, who helped me to develop this whole system. I actually do interactive role play pickups with you. So sometimes you are the girl and you're on the receiving end of how I would pick you up. And as I do the pickup with your thumb, you might not say anything, but your thumb goes up to say, I like this. And then I act the role of the girl and I test you, right? So you're picking me up and I will test you and I can say, ah, uh, you know, you're losing me. Or maybe I'm listening and I'm liking it. I'm saying, that's pretty good. So the most invaluable thing that we have discovered in my last five years of coaching, the last time since I put out an online program, day game, phone game back in the past, is that now we have an online classroom where I can do interactive pickups with you. Listen as you do interactive pickups with other students. One guy plays the guy, the other one plays the girl. And I listen and give you feedback and it is just brilliant. There's the same kind of structure for most of the pickups, things that you need to be aware of. I map you on the conversational compass and I can literally download what's in my brain to your brain by practicing it, reflecting on it and interacting with you. It's absolutely unbelievable. Okay. Now, of course, there's only one of me and there's thousands of you. So there's a limited amount of seats that's going to be available for this program coming out in a short amount of time. And if you're listening to this video in the future, there'll be some form of this online classroom available for you if you follow the links in the description but this this has been just such a huge relief because when you can be on the receiving end of what it's like to be picked up by a good conversational host with a range of emotions it's just such a breeze it makes it easy for you and you want that host to keep talking you like being seduced and then you can play the role of the guy I can listen and tell you why you're doing well what you're missing the mistakes that you're making uh, unknown traps that you're falling into, it's all there. I've been working on this for about four months now, that's why I haven't put out a whole lot of content. So I'm super, super excited. The videos are done, they're recorded, they're online, we're ready to send them to you. We just need to get our online classroom together and it will all come to you, okay? So flirting, flirting, barreling through, using five topics in a row, and you can do these simulations with your friends and with me online, to get your game to where it's supposed to be so that you can actually overcome helplessness and hopelessness in dating and get the results that you want. Super excited to bring this to you as you can see from this lovely Miami area. Hit a like if you learned something here. Comment if you got some questions. Of course, subscribe if this is the first time you've seen this video. My name is Alex Social and I'll speak to you again next week.